Hello and welcome to a very special Easy Odds International Friendly yeah. video cast we're going through today. We're just going to run through the Home Nations games. Um, let's start off uh, Czech Republic versus Scotland. Czech Republic had a good uh, Euro uh, qualifying campaign, obviously so did Scotland in a really difficult group. Um, yeah. But what's happening in this friendly, Ross? Yeah, um, Scotland can count themselves really unlucky, can't they? They they did really well in their group in in difficult circumstances up against the likes of Germany, world mm -hmm. champions of course, and Poland, who have just got Le have just got Lewandowski, who's really really good at football. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, they didn't qualify. They missed out just just. But they travelled to Prague here for a pretty difficult looking game. Mm -hmm. On paper, Czech, Czech Republic don't sound that menacing anymore. Mm -hmm. um, try and think of a Czech player off the top of your head, and you'll probably struggle. Um, but they've actually done really well at home in their qualifying. Um, their four wins in their last six in front of their home fans is really impressive, including picking up six points against Holland and Iceland. Iceland are actually one of the up-and-coming up, up nations in, in football at the moment, um, so that's no mean feat, and beating Holland. Even though Holland have been, form, uh, have been in poor form recently, it's still a decent um, scoreline to beat Holland at home. Whereas Gordon Strachan's men are just an absolutely ultimate home side. Yeah. They, they, they pick up so many points at, at home and they struggle yeah, away from home. Um, it's their, a uh, fortress there, isn't it? Yeah, their loss at um, Georgia proved that um, that was a pretty key loss and um, pretty much took out all hope of them qualifying. Yeah, um, nice. And coming up against uh, Czech Republic side, who've won four of the last six at home. I just fancy a home win here. It, it, is, it is odds on, it's four to five. Um, but I do think that's pretty good value in this friendly game where they're going to be looking to get some confidence still a nice going price. into the tournament. Four to five. It's still an accumulator level price, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, you can't go wrong with a nice little accumulator bets occasionally. One Czech Republic player that I thought of him a while back, Nedved. Nedved, yeah. He was um, good. Get him back. What? Pretty what? certain he's not in the squad anymore, Jay. He's got good hair, though. <laughs> he's got great he's hair. He's still got good hair. He's in the L'Oreal <laughs> legend squad with David Ginn. Absolutely, Jim. yeah. Um, Next up, we've got uh, Wales against Northern Ireland, a bailless Wales, so I don't really know how they're going to cope with that. Um, yeah. I don't know how, how they're going to do anything, to be honest, so uh, what, what's going to happen, Ross? Yeah, um, bailless Wales is um, pretty um, it's kind of average. Shall we, uh, shall we call them average? It's Ashley Williams, is what <laughs> Wales, Yeah, um, but they are a decent side, Wales. They have picked up some, some really good results, including beating Belgium, who are, um, I, I, I believe they're still ranked number one in the world, aren't they? Belgium, um, incredibly. Hazard. Hazard's a really good player this <laughs> yeah. season. Um, but of course, Northern Ireland don't have Hazard. So, no. <laughs> um, But yeah, it's going to be an interesting game. Lots of Football League players on show here, so I'm happy as a Football League fanatic. Um, but Michael O'Neill actually needs an absolute pat on the back and a mm. big pay bonus because Definitely. for him t to get this Northern Ireland squad to the European Championships, he did an absolutely brilliant job. Granted, they had a fairly easy group but they still got the so, job done um, the size of the country absolutely and when Carl Lafferty who doesn't play cl um, club football as he's on the bench for Norwich yeah. um, sometimes not even on the bench for Norwich t t to be scoring the, the amount of international goals that he scored absolutely unbelievable. unbelievable but I do think that away from home Wales um, will be able to beat a Northern Ireland side who actually I'm, I'm beating an eight um, Michael O'Neill has made them really hard to beat but, mm. I, but, but I just fancy Wales to nick this, um, Northern Ireland went to um, Scotland in the last time that, that they faced a kind of home nation mm. and they uh, lost 1-0 and I can see something similar happening here, maybe someone like Sam Vokes who's doing uh, really great things at Burnley at the moment, maybe getting the goal. Yeah. Um, I do think that Wales will just about nick it here in a match of two home nations. Yeah, that's a, that's a night, it's going to be a good atmosphere there isn't it, it's going to be a great atmosphere, even Val Bale, still even will be good. Yeah. Uh, the next home nation, well, home, kind of home nation we're going for, Republic of Ireland versus Switzerland. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm looking forward to this, actually. Um, Switzerland are a decent team. Um, but I think that they've been um, wrongly put as favourites for this game. Ireland um, are the outsiders in this match, according to the bookies. And that's despite the fact that Ireland have actually not lost any of their last nine games at home. Mm -hmm. And that includes the wins against the world champions, Germany. Um, a, that was a ridiculous. A <laughs> draw against Poland, a draw against England, three of those sides, um, not not losing to any, any of those sides. So I don't see why Switzerland are favourites to win this Switzerland game. Switzerland always seem to be favourites. Like they always seem to be over overestimated. Yeah, um, they, they are a good team, um, but I just don't fancy them here. Um, Switzerland have lost to both Slovakia and England in recent outings away from home. So away from home, they're hardly in good form, and they're up against a home side who just 
don't lose. So yeah. I, I, I just don't, don't quite understand why Ireland have made 29 to 10 the favourites here to win this game. And whilst I'm not necessarily so keen that they'll win the game, I, mm. I don't think they'll lose. Mm. So I think backing them in the draw no bet market is a really smart bet at an even price. So you get your stake return for a draw or an even money win for an Ireland win. I didn't even see that it was draw no bet. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Even, I thought they were going to be evens just to, just to win the game. Yeah. So I'm really happy with that. Um, they are without Harry Arter, who I really, really rate the Bournemouth centre midfielder, um, which is a shame for Ireland. But I do think that they can com- come away from this game without losing in it. Yeah. And even money in the draw no bet market, I think that's a pretty decent bet. It's a brilliant price, Ross. Thanks very Nailed much. Nailed it. <laughs> but now we're going on to the big game. The biggest game of yeah, them oh, all. I'm, I'm actually really excited for an England friendly, Jake. I can't believe it. I, mm, I'm kind of excited. <laughs> I wish it was. I prefer it to be the Premier League, but <laughs> it, it doesn't get much bigger. As, a, as friendlies go, it doesn't get yeah. much less friendly than Germany versus England. Um, I'm going to let you get to it, Ross. Yeah, I'm, yeah. as I said, really excited for this game in the Olympia Stadion of, of Berlin, one of my favourite stadiums. Actually, I've actually been there a few times. It's, okay. it's an amazing stadium. Lo- um, love seeing games there even with the running track the atmosphere is amazing mm. um, sometimes that ruins it a bit doesn't sometimes it sometimes it does yeah but there seems to be just an amazing atmosphere there and I'm sure that it will be for this game England have been incredible in home this season um, in the past few um, weeks and um, years they've actually won seven in a row at Wembley which is amazing and of course they, they're playing away from home and it's about time that England really pushed on and mm. got a result away from home that, that gave us fans a bit of confidence that that, that we can go to, to, to a tournament and, yeah. and beat these, these these bigger teams. We tried against Spain, played well in that game, were pretty unlucky to lose 2 0, I felt. Yeah. Um, but again, came undone. However, we're actually at a big price here, Jake, of yeah. 5 to 1 to win this game. I think that's a that huge price, that's um, especially when you consider that in the last three matches that, that Germany have played, they've lost to Ireland. Yeah, they've lost to France. Yeah, and they've only beaten Georgia two one at home. Mm. That's that's hardly an indication that Germany are in great form. Exactly. Um, and whilst five to one is a great price, I'm not necessarily saying it's a great bet because England will win this game. I'm yeah. not entirely sure that England will win the game. So in a similar vein to to the Ireland tip, I'm going to actually go to a slightly better price here because I'm actually going for the double chance market, ah. and uh, which is where you get your win for either a draw or a win yeah. unlike the, the draw no bet market where you just get your stake return for a draw mm-hmm. um, and, and England are a best price 11 to 8 here in that market so even if we scrape a draw away at Germany you'll still get a win for a decent price of 11 to 8 which I think is a really good price as, as I said Germany at the moment struggling mm. for form a little bit surely they're um, they're capable of turning on and I'm sure that that they'll fancy it up against the English. Yeah. But I think 11 to 8 on a pretty young, exciting England team Very to exciting. go to Germany and and either draw or win the game at 11 to 8 is a decent price. But if you're even more patriotic than that, 5 to 1 on an England win isn't a terrible bet. It's a very yeah. good price. So, yeah. Um, yeah, 11 to 8 in the England d- double chance market. I think that's a, I think this is one of the most exciting times I've, I've known of being an English fan. Yeah. Obviously, everyone says that all the time. <laughs> Every single <laughs> yeah. tournament before the tournament, you think, oh, hang on, we've got Dele Alli in the field. We're going to win. Have you seen that goal he scored? We've got Vardy. It was a good goal. That, that was a very good goal. And Vardy. <laughs> they were the two best goals of the season. If we're going on that, going from best well, goals go. of the season, we've already won. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah um, that's my um, tips there. Um, if you want to put that into an accumulator, of course you can using the Easy Odds app. Um, I looked into the best price for that, and if you take out the draw near bet one, uh, so you make it a treble, that's a best price of around four to one. So nice. n- not not bad at all. So that would be my advised treble: um, a Czech Republic win, a Wales win, and England d- um, double chance treble. It's coming in. The money's going to come in. Money's coming in, and hopefully you'll have a great Easter and have a four to one winnings of however much stake you put on it. And lots of Easter eggs from the winnings. Lots of Easter eggs on the winnings. But not cream eggs because they're disgusting. Oh, I don't agree with that. Ooh. But here we go. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. I've been Ross Casey. This is Jake Johnson. He hates cream eggs. Bye. Bye.